almost back. Let's go right to the draft, guys. <laughs> we getting the draft rolling? <laughs> and we're back. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Took us a few extra clicks, but we're here. We're here for game number three, Empire versus Liquid, guys. <laughs> we're possibly going the distance. We're going to get at least four games in this best of five. And, well, myself, Gods, and Fog are here to take you through this best of five. And then also a best of three afterwards between Virtus Pro and Team OG. Does OG actually stand for something? I don't know. X monkey business. X monkey business. Yeah, that's what we call it. I think they still say monkey business on our overlays. But let's hop into the draft. Things already going through. We're gonna have to click. We're sp keep spamming clicks. Click, click, click. Just gonna have to keep looking at us for a bit. Oh, oh, oh. Fire rolling. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's sometimes you know we're having a rough day here at the BTS studio. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have those kind of days. Oh, exploits, exploits also, Jay. Like, just keep clicking the draft. We'll get there eventually. We'll uh, talk you through it, though. It was first pick going Liquid's way. They first picked Tusk. Empire got Shadow Fiend and Dazzle. Liquid then get picked the Winter Wyvern. Um, yeah, Liquid's on the uh, Radiant side, Empire on the time. Dire side this time. Looks like Empire wants to try out the Shadow Fiend for themselves this time around. Yeah. No luck rolling? What's going on? Do, you, do we need a restart exploit? We may have to take the stream down for a second, guys. All right, so don't panic. Stream will Team go down quickly, to and then we'll be right back up. Sorry about that, everyone. Team Empires turn to ban. Damn it, Roland. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Oh, we're here. All right, never mind. We do we, so we didn't take the stream down? Okay, good. We didn't need a picnic. Well, we just missed some of the draft. <laughs> okay, so now people can actually see the draft. We lost our preview remaining. monitor though, but at least we're in the draft. You guys get to see picks, so what what do you make of the draft so far? Some pretty Team standard stuff. The only thing that's out of the ordinary I'd say is that Furion ban. Liquid doesn't seem like they want to deal with it. Just wanna play some, you know, just their you know, like we were saying, their own Dota. They don't yeah. wanna get pulled into some game that they're not really too comfortable playing in. Mm -hmm. They have their tusk this time around. They have a pretty damn good win rate on it too, so this time Empire actually choose the dire side, so I think this is the first time we're seeing dire side with second pick. Yeah. Game one and game two, both teams chose Radiant, I believe. Mm -hmm. That looks to me like a deny pick right there. They didn't ban out the clockwork in the third and fourth phase, and you know we were saying before yeah. how my control loves his Tuscar, loves his clockwork. That may have been a deny pick, but also clockwork. Not it can a never. I, I always feel like a third pick can never be a full deny pick because you just said two bans. If you really want, if it was such a big issue that you don't want to get it to him, you just ban it out. Yeah. Obviously, it's, it's kind of acts as a third ban slash half a pick, mm -hmm. but to me, it can never be like a full on deny pick. Remaining. Not like you see your opponents pick an IO in the first pick and then you're like, well, let's pick the tiny. That that that's a deny pick. Like yeah, full on for sure. So. Empire will have the offlane resolution clockwork. We've seen resolution play all kind. Of, he's not afraid. To, it reminds you a lot with misery and how he's adjusted with seeker, where he's just like, "Well, bring it on. I'll play anything that you throw at me." Huh. And Necrophos comes out. It's early Necro. That's yeah. They've run this a decent amount from a Tumba Man, but not normally picking it this early on in the draft. Winter Wyvern. Do you pick AA here against the Wyvern Necro? AA Dazzle is that too weak or? No it's lockdown. really good versus the two those two heroes, but there's you also Tusk. T Tusk pulls them out of it as well. It's pretty good versus the AA okay. at some points. You do have the clock, though. Five yeah, I mean, you're not too worried about it. I mean, you co Cold Feet is still a great lockdown. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that, that spell actually get maxed out a lot earlier than it used to in the past. Yeah, I, I would very much be like, let's pick an AA here. Maybe they've got Necro Wyvern, let's just... Or the Aloha Rubik. The Aloha Rubik is there. He does love that hero. Curse, decent steal. Reaper Scythe, if you can get it, pretty damn good. Okay. Could lead into, do we dare say, another gyro pick with a Rubik gyro? I sure hope not. <laughs> I don't think with Shadow. Shadow. <laughs> oh my god. Damn it, damn it. <laughs> they like the gyro so much. Oh. I mean, it's not going to necessarily be like the main. I mean, you've got the SF, so you've got that secondary core to go with it. And it does synergize nicely with the clockwork. Liquid, right though. Team Instant Empire response to the gyro. Just like last time, they just picked the Viper just right away. First dirty, dirty picks. I mean, this is Liquid in a nutshell here. Viper Necrophos. Ugh. This is filthy. Gyro's not... Gyro can still work, but... Yeah. Not particularly Ten the best versus remaining. this... You know, Tuskar, super tanky. He's able to snowball his teammates almost Five all the time out of the call down. 
if he gets to the late game, I feel like damage output for Liquid, like they haven't got a huge amount of burst time. damage to set up a Reaper. Normally with a Necrophos, you want at least something to give you some initial burst. Yeah. I guess they always give Fata a ton of farm, so by no means is this your standard, like kind of utility tanky frontline Viper. He becomes yeah. a true carry. He becomes ex <laughs> extremely yeah. farmed, very hard right clicks. Team Plus the lockdown with uh, Winter's back. Curse into a Reaper Scythe is quite terrifying, even though Empire does have two BKB cores. Well, they man at the AA, so the Aloha Dance Rubik suddenly looking like the hot commodity that's available for Team Empire. If they want it, they can have it, and it's pretty damn nice with the Gyrocopter and a few good spells around to steal. Ice Shard, Snowball, and the Winter's Curse. I just feel like it's a... It, maybe it's not like the absolute best support here there, but it's a very comfort hero for Aloha. And every time I see him play that hero, he's just like yeah. making plays all over the place, making space. Mm -hmm. Even if he's dying, he's making tons of space. I thought that it's not like a great remaining. disruptor game or anything, which is another support empire go to quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, Reserve time. Let's see. They're not really. They've got enough damage out of the gyro SF. Really, it feels like at all stages of the game, their lamp's not really short or lacking anything right now. No field. Not too bad versus Reaper Scythe as well. Yep. What other? Let's, let's see what other heroes there could be. Mm. They banned out their... Witch Doctor, Disruptor, what other standard supports? Earthshaker, do we dare say? Nah, I don't, th I don't think we're going to be seeing that hero too yeah. much. People are just keeping cl keeping pretty clear of it. Although it is good versus Venge? with the Shadow They actually run Venge every now and then. Oh, Venge, Venge is SF. good. They are dire. Dire side. Dire side. Um can swap out a hero who's maybe getting initiated by like a snowball or something, pull the tusk even further in. Swap the I curse. I don't mind Venge so much here. Back to the line. Okay. Team felt like they need yeah, I guess they felt like they needed a bit of lockdown. They only really have the clockwork. They're not it's not like they're versing an ember this game. I feel like against a Viper Necro, they're just gonna stand still. You don't actually need as much lockdown against these kind of core heroes, mm -hmm. but still good to have at least one. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, not a a solid pick, regardless. Yeah, I guess they're winning with it as well. I they mean, feel uh, some confidence. If Avenger or a Rubik brings lockdown. I mean, they they don't yeah. have the same amount of tools as a Lion, but they at least give you another lockdown spell. So yeah. I feel like those were very viable still here. Lion also, uh, not to overlook Earth Spike versus Tuscar. If Tuscar does snowball people into a, you know, not a best situation, he can always get a pretty good Earth Spike on multiple oh. heroes. All right, so we'll see. Liquid's last pick now. Most likely a support, unless for some reason they want to run the Jarek's Tusk. Jarek's normally the Winter Wyvern player, so it will be possibly a Kuro hero for the fifth pick. See what that may be. Team that runs the CM every now and then, but... Witch Doctor's good here with, with yep. the healing. They're gonna go for, They're probably going to get a mech on either the Viper or Necro. Probably the Viper, because mm. Fata, but... They already have the Winter Wyvern. It's another healer. Maybe maybe Witch Doctor is just a bit redundant. Well, we can always go like more damage build if they feel they want damage this game. But do they go Rubik? Kuro I feel Rubik. Kuro plays a lot of Lich though and stuff like on this team instead of like yeah. the Rubik and all that. He plays more of these niche type picks. Yep. And they do have this Tusk. And they do. I think they did Lich Tusk a few times. Undying is banned, yeah. so they can't do the Tusk Undying. I wouldn't even be surprised to see the Crystal Maiden, which he's played quite a bit of. Yeah, that too. It gives you some team fight, and they're actually a bit light on damage, but... And we talked about I should just... I, why am I even questioning I you? Just, you're just on point right You now. talked me know. out of it, and I was very much <laughs> like, you're actually... You were, you were more right than me. Like, I threw a Kuro Rubik out there, but like they have not been playing Kuro's Rubik at no. all. Like, that was... As soon as you said that, I'm like, you're probably right. I don't actually see them picking Rubik here. It is good against Clockwork, clockwork but... Yeah. It has not been a go-to here at all for Liquid. This is very much an anomaly as far as the Rubik pick. But Kuroki Rubik. So, very, yeah. And, ver and there's a lot of magic damage. Nullfield is great. Gyro, SF, Lion. This is, I mean, talked about being good for Empire. It's also pretty good for Liquid. Once you get to the later stages, anyways. By then, I guess you're more worried about the physical damage an SF Gyro may bring to the table. Yeah. All right. So here we go, game three. This is effectively the start of a best of three now with things tied up one game apiece. One of these two teams will be making it to the Summit Four land final. We kind of talked about this during the break. This is big for these two teams. Neither are going to be at the Frankfurt Major and Empire making a few slight adjustments, but Liquid sticking with their guns and sticking with their same current roster. Prepare for battle. There go. One TP this time, only one. Ooh. And Jarex had the courier <laughs> in, his dash, in, in his inventory, so he's got to send it all the way walking back. I love when that happens. It's, it's a good old flop jaw. A walk of shame for the poor courier. 
Doesn't see any early warding coming out. And we'll be resolution. Boots first going down towards the rune, but... Oh, Jarex might catch the vision of it. Oh, he should know that's there. He yep. should know that's there. It's pinged out immediately. Yep. We'll sentry it. That's a value D ward. Not ideal for Empire. Nope. The clock, still at least, it won't hurt his laning stage too much because he's always got the guaranteed level 2 from the cogs. Looks like he's going to join up with his team. They're almost like gunning for a level 1 fight here in the top lane. And if Clockwork sticks around, that does mean he may miss that cogs for the first wave. Back. He's going to start heading back now, okay. looks like. They just want to make sure that they get this top rune, putting four heroes there. And they've got no vision out on the map right now. They're completely guessing where Liquid are, but... I feel confident enough to go for this, I believe, with just the four heroes. Yep. So Jerex is kind of naked this game. He bought both Ops, Sentries, and the Courier, while Kuroki went for the boots. Normally, uh, you see, uh, with Liquid, it's kind of a, like there's not really a clear four position for them, I guess, between Jarex and Kuro. Yeah, like, it like, depends on the game. It's like, hey, I'm I'm kicking ass. Yep. Go for it. A lot of teams, it's kind of a more clear difference between the two supports. So we'll see how things unravel here. Resolution in the offlane on Clockwork gets uh, looking for that big block off for now. He'll be up against the Winter Wyvern and Necro of Matumba Man and Jarex. And we'll be a, a 2v2 at mid. <laughs> SF vs Viper with the supports lingering around to offer some extra protection and help here. This time around SF going for a Wraith Band build and we'll be looking for the early souls out of the Necromastery. A slightly different build from the SF. It was against a Quop, so it's probably a different approach against the, the Viper. Yeah. My control just contesting the Lion top. Probably he'll be, he'll be able to get some levels up here for sure. They can't really uh, push him out. No fear again. Whoa, TP already in mid. Damn. He got oh yeah, pulled back in by the telekinesis, so. I don't know, that, was, that was an interesting TP. <laughs> I, I guess I, he had to. <laughs> I think he was safe, but. Hmm. Oh. Kuro, what are you doing here? Looking for a, what? A courier sniper? Or at least courier. to scout out when No Fear returns so he can at least give his team the info they need. Like, okay, Dazzle's back mid. It's safe here. Resolution the offline has hit level 2 now. And here we go, Rubik gonna poke his nose back in mid lane house. Another telekinesis, but unfortunately Viper missing these low ground to... Oh, misses two in a row. Fata misses three. three in a row. Oh man, we saw this last game as well. Or was it game one where he was just kept on getting these uphill misses? Yeah, that was, that was game one where he was oh, the man. Viper. He just yep. doesn't have good uphill hits with uh, the Viper, it seems. Sometimes it feels like that uphill miss is like 50% or something. Yeah. They do have the lane ward, though, in the mid lane, and I'm pretty sure Empire should be wary of that one, the way that uh, Fato was hitting him when Kuroki wasn't on the side yet. Yeah. Very hard to de ward, though, with it on the radiant side of the river, and also there's just a number of spots it could be in. Definitely. Resolution so, getting decent levels. Mind control as well. Oh, Aloha trap, but there's a haste rune. Yeah. Should be able to get out of this one. They've already used the telekinesis and everything, so Aloha. Not too bad a result for him. If he wants to, he can suicide to neutrals here as well, but it looks like with the Tango Clarity, he's going to stay in lane, stick around to help Silent out as much as possible. And early game laning stage looking pretty solid for Liquid. They've done a really good job of preventing the SF from getting much out of this mid lane, but very much a catch up here. So you can shut him down the first four to five minutes in terms of this, the lane goes, but it's not something that's going to. that you can maintain. At least you can farm stacks and Viper can't really, but yeah. Fata always seems to find his farm on Viper. Oh yeah. Fata, I mean, regardless of hero, he does it on Razor yeah. as well. He's And he doesn't even feel like he plays overly greedy necessarily. Mind control getting pressured. Are they going to dive for this? Looks like they are. Yep, another Rocket Barrage coming out in just a second here. He's going to get the first blood. Gyro, silent. Oh no, Aloha. Still worth it, I guess. 120, no gold, and it's distributed between five, so that's like not a big deal for Lion, who was out of HP, out of mana. Like, yeah, just went back to base. He was going to suicide to neutrals anyways. Just means Liquid get, what, 25 gold apiece. That's that's one extra CS for each Liquid hero. Could be a big deal. Could be. <laughs> but probably won't. Unlikely. Unlikely. Man, General is just splitting the XP almost completely with the Dazzle. Not getting many CS either. This mid lane is just just not good. Not good for Empire at all. You really don't want a Viper getting this type of situation happening. I mean, good news. Resolution's doing well in the off lane. He's got 8 CS, level 4. So he's getting more than enough out of his lane. Then again, you are playing a clockwork into those heroes. 
It's a Tuscar, Necro, oh, Wyvern, yeah. Viper. It sounds oh. Rubik even also. All all five of those heroes look yeah. pretty scary for a clockwork to me. No, I, I agree. Like who it's not like you hit like a timing where it's like, oh I've got a blade mail now, I can hook this gyro and kill him, or there's these squishies that I can go on. Once these these heals will just completely counterplay him. I mean, Tuffman Man actually going for an early glove is possibly a Midas pickup, although also it does build into the treads, but normally you'd see the the stat item picked up before the gloves if that's the case. I think it'll I think this will be a Midas this, this game. It's a good call. Nope, liquid. We lied. Oh, okay. As soon as we say it. Damn it. Yeah, it still could be, you know, it could go back. <laughs> you could go back for it. Rain rain hopeful. But uh, SF going for boots over bottle first. That's uh Interesting little change in the SF build here. He will find some stacks now to fall back to, but Kuro ready to contest this. He's at Gnosis. He walks right into Kuro. Needs to hit the raises here. He's got just level two raises. Hits one. Second one available, but he's going to need two or three. It's bottom lane where they get the kill, though. Keeping an eye on Kuro. He's getting chased down, but has boots available as well as the telekinesis. May need to use it. Elsewhere in the back lines, the Tusk snowballing on over. Where's he going? Looks like with Fata in, ch in, in jail. He's looking to fight General on the SF. Gyrocopter shows up now. A big fight breaking loose here. The Grave TP General will escape this one. The Rocket Barrage. The cooldown. Silent. He's going to hit level 6 off of this. And with that, Fata goes down. A huge swing goes Empire's way. Mind Control. All we can hope for now is probably a neutral suicide. Rocket. Oh, 5 HP. Very close to getting the kill onto resolution ambitious what? snowball and a, oh, ro rotations but good rotations come out of empire just to get some kills out there and this is bottom lane resolution just got he just kind of ran down he got hit by winter Wyvern a okay. few times got hit by a slow and then just got hit by like one or two death pulses and i was going to comment also the treads are just really good because tread swapping with uh sadist is pretty op in lane okay so resolution will return back towards the bottom lane look to get his level six as soon as possible and sf as soon as he's ready, he can go back towards those jungle stacks. Six CS on SF. One CS a minute. Oh boy, has he been struggling. And now Fata getting aggressive on the high ground. Unfortunately, not level six, or that would have been a kill. Looks like General was just trying to hit level five before he goes into the jungle to farm his stack. Can't really farm this with level two raises. Problem is Fata still with a high ground ward. Making SF's life in this mid lane a miserable time. I don't think I've ever seen it that low. CS, 7 CS, one, 1 CS per minute. With a dual lane too. Like yeah. this, is, this is not even like a, oh, Dazzle's around every now and then. This was a full-on dual lane from No Fear. And he may just try to farm this before level 5. It looks he like, didn't yeah. even go for the bottle on the Shadow Fiend. Because of how hard he was being pressured. Okay. Rubik, how cocky he's being here. He just walks in. Telekinesis is No Fear into the stack. Almost gets a kill off of that. Would have been the neutrals getting credited for it, but... Is another gyrocopter sol well not solo killer kill on the top lane. Yeah, just hex my control is just trying to get XP at the tower and he just gets hex stunned and then chased down and just gets killed. Empire have to bring in so many heroes to secure these neutrals. And that means SF isn't even getting much in the in form of experience out of this. Resolution though, I guess happy to get some XP towards his level six. And there we go. SF finally Dyer's hits level five. And very rarely do you see an SF hit level five at seven and a half minutes into the game. It's not good. Not good, to say the least. The good news is Gyro is dominating. He's a thousand net worth ahead of anyone else in the game, and he's going to be the space creator, I guess, for SF to catch up. But it's yeah. going to be a lot of catch up this game. They might want to even try for some, like, pulling him into the short lane and going for a kill onto the Necro, because Necro's starting to get some good free farm. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. See, I mean, you mentioned Midas as a possible earlier pickup. Still could go back for it, sitting on 1500 gold now with Tumba Man. Feels like this is going to be more slow paced farm type of game. With how much SF has been crushed in the mid lane, if anything, Liquid may look to just try and apply more pressure, knowing that Empire are not really in the best fighting shape. Yeah, they might just try to barrel down and go, because Fata is bringing out a stick. He's going to just constantly hit this tower. They have Jarex already set up level 5 behind it. My control rotates in. Four heroes mid. This tower is going to go down. Yeah. They're going to try to rotate some people in. SF's going to try to pull aggro, but he might die because there's a ward behind the tower. Dyer's yep. tower They're ready for a attack. Arctic Burn snowball, but looks like he'll back off far enough. And keep in mind, though, SF still, if he at least hits level 7, can come to these fights and just provide raises for the team. But he needs to even get some of those levels. Resolution, level 6. He's been spotted out on the sidelines here. And Tumble Man also rocking up to the party. There's five Liquid Heroes at least near this mid lane, and with a Gyrocopter TP... 
Looks like they want to engage here. Resolution does not want to hook the Jerax Wyvern as he can Arctic Burn out of there. It looks like that was a uh, somewhat wasted TP from Gyrocopter. It does open up the top lane for the Lion to get some solo XP towards his level 6. Something you don't see too often. You know, Shadow Fiend farming the uh, bottom lane, level 6 at 9 minutes. <laughs> this the support Shadow Fiend. Jeez. Oh. Desperate times. Just excellent heads, like heads up play by Liquid, just you know, putting that dual lane mid. They've gone in on top of Aloha Dance, recognizing that Jaro TP'd mid. Mind Control rotates in with Kuro and they get, do get the kill on the Lion. And it will be a drums pickup from a Tumble Man. We talked about just applying pressure with how much the SF is struggling and how far behind he is. This is the kind of one of the perfect items to do so with. They're going to have a very good timing window. It's going to be like drums, mech on Viper, and SF's going to barely have be having treads. What Lion. Empire will have is a Clockwork Gyro who have levels and are ready to fight. Those two heroes are actually already on the move. They're going to find the Necrophos here. There we go. He may have a drums now, but I don't think he can survive this one. They've got a cooldown as well if they need it. Doesn't look like they will. Matumba Man goes down. Big they high priority do. kill. Space. Let's make more space. General is like, please, three more times. <laughs> yeah. Maybe five more times. Three more times would be nice, though. Yeah. Are we telling his Lion, get your damn level six and go do that as well? Yeah. It looks like Lion will try and do so at the top lane. Viper did end up getting the T1 mid tower, but that seemed inevitable. Even if Empire tried to focus a defense on it, it just felt like a bad use of resources. Oh, Aloha. Lane, Aloha. Well, he's close to level 6. Won't quite get there. Clockwork keeping in. They get the kill before any kind of counterplay can come out. If Lion had just gone off an Impale, we could have likely seen a kill here. Clockwork still goes in. He's got backup and Kuro in some trouble. That. That'll just zone out the rest of the heroes while the Rocket Barrage will finish off the Rubik in the front lines. Fata still wants to fight. He's only got a buckler for the time being. Oh no, silent. Oh, oh no, Matumba's gonna open. Shots. Oh, he's oh. got the brave. Beautiful no TP, brave. and he's just gonna look to turn and, well, not really fight. He's gonna turn and die. Better, you know what, better than having that plus 30 seconds on your death yep. timer though. But two kills, that's an unstoppable streak for Fata. That is his mech finished up on the career. Oh man. Perfect rotation. And Liquid gonna just do what they do best, which is just kind of Five men around their item timings and just take objectives. Play very calculated, methodical Dota. They're gonna look for this tier one top town. That's all three tier ones taken by 11 minutes in. And I don't imagine they'll stop there. They've got such great sustain with the, the Wyvern Necrophos. They've got multiple arcane boots. They've got a mech. They've got drums. I believe it's what, two, three arcane boots even up on the Radiant side. They have got... Just never-ending heals and spam coming out from all their heroes when they're grouped up. Oh man, up. General's getting slowed down a bit. I don't know if they catch this. Looks okay for now. If he turns for the rune, good, he doesn't. I mean, at this point, I guess you just don't even go for the mech on SF, or do you still think it's the item? Not even sure. He's so... <laughs> I've ne I haven't seen a Shadow Fiend this far behind in a very long time. Known for being one of those heroes Look, that just never snowball. gets behind. My control gets caught up. And even when he has a bad lane stage, it's almost always the case where he can at least fall back to his jungle, but Ooh. he didn't even get levels. Yeah. Kuroki with a nice steal. He's got Rocket Flare. It's pretty useful. Some good vision. Can throw out. Level 4 Rocket Flare as well. Yeah. Oh, they catch out Jerax oh, here. Jerax. Arctic Burn TP possibly going to fly over the side here. Doesn't even break the trees, so he'll survive. Looks pretty safe. Not even going to TP out, so he's going to be in position to defend this bottom Radiant tier 1 tower. It does have to wait for the Arctic Burn cooldown, it looks like. And there is no path out of these trees. <laughs> nice little splinter blast. Cheeky. General's got his treads. Treads a killer. Ping out Jerex. They scout him out. There's the Impale. Oh, Jerex! Bit too cheeky, mate. Uh -oh. He gets brought down. They will get the counter kill onto Aloha Dancer's Lion, but... I guess acceptable for Empire, considering they are creating space for General. Seems about the most important thing for them right now. Definitely. Maybe, yeah. I don't know if the mech will really Dyer's do too much by the time he gets it. He's just, it's just I, too far behind. I don't think he's going. He's picked up Treads Aquila, so getting stats. I think you just rush either SMY or BKB here. Some stat Radiant's item. Get, get yourself some... I guess mech is, in theory, stats and survivability, but... It's going to be a rough game for him, no matter what he goes for. Yeah, for sure. Silence making a lot of space. And he's going to have the f he's gonna have his phase us and Y at, at an incredibly fast oh, yeah. pace this game. Already, yeah. Just one belt away from it. He's 7-1. and one. 
Complete opposite to his game one gyrocopter performance, so. My control really likes his urn. He's Tuscar buys an urn. Oof. All three heroes that he's bought played so far, he's bought an urn. I guess this game neither of your support like Rubik sometimes goes in, but Why Kuroki tends to just rush for that blink after his arcanes. Yep. Oh, they're going to walk right into the smoke gank here. Resolution is there on the high ground. Gets the cogs off perfectly, but the Winter's Curse will catch up too. They lose Lion. Resolution could be next. Reaper not going to secure the kill. The hook out. Tick damage. Tick, tick, tick. One oh, more rocket, rocket flare. That's stolen. <laughs> Kuro. He was ready. Not Big ready was goal. Team Empire. If they had Gyro there for that clockwork on the high ground, they even were in the right position to scout out the, uh, the gank coming in. Unfortunately, he did not get the cogs down fast enough to keep Liquid on the low ground. Yeah, it was like instant snowball. Aloha goes for the stun yeah. and just gets, gets dodged. So only what, three of the Liquid heroes were caught outside on the on the bottom of the ramp, but it was enough vision for the Winter's Curse, and Liquid will get a tier 2 tower off of this, and it looks like they're going to try and... Def nope, not going to... Oh, yeah, they will TP. That's a Necrophos. In comes Jerex. No Arctic Burn just yet. The cooldown is there. But be careful. Silent. You got to fight this one. No Reaper and no TP cancel available. SNY finished up. 15 minutes. That's General starting impressive. to slowly climb up as well. He's got he's got 6k net worth somehow. He's not dying either. <laughs> it's an it is That's an accomplishment. You look at this score, he's zero zero. It's like you'd think, oh, was, yeah, he's not that far, but it looks like just a slightly poor SF game. But he was getting crushed. If you like, most players though would be trying to like find other places to recover and probably getting like netting some deaths out of it. Yeah. This guy's just being as safe as possible, trying not to die, trying not to give anything else up. And it's up. For Empire, looks like maybe a smoke timing soon. They've got the Lion Finger of Death, so possibly like a Lion Clockwork time to smoke. Even with bringing the Gyrocopter, I think for very much General does not need to be there for anything right now. He's still in catch-up mode. Some nice aggressive wards coming out from Liquid and the jungle. Snowball coming in from No Fear. Shards off the mark. Nice stun there from Lion. Ready for it. No Fear gets his braces delivered as well, so some extra stats and HP to go with this Liquid aggression and save them. Uh-oh. Beautiful shards. Has to use a defensive hook again. And again, this Rocket Flare steal from Kuro giving Vision as well some nice AoE damage onto the side of Team Empire. And Empire just playing keep away. They're kind of farming as far away from Liquid as possible. Lothar. Matumbo also went for Blink Dagger on uh -huh. Necro, and we have a Lothar Shadow Fiend. And this is... We saw this a bit from Secret with we as well as Envy sometimes going for this item build when they feel they can get away with it. And hey, he was in full recovery mode, and now he's gonna... Maybe he's gonna go for some, some cheeky plays. And you get one kill in a core with this, and it's... I mean, it doesn't necessarily... You don't get your money back, but it's close to pay, paid for itself. Because it's a good, decent fighting item anyways, with the damage and attack speed. Yeah. Empire has full vision of Liquid right now. Yep. Yeah, we'll use this to advantage. SF's Shadow Blade has... I believe, yeah, has been scattered out. Radiant Vision. Very Snowball much Snowball on Resolution. Which we get Impaled again. This Impaled is being set up. The Cogs pushes there. Where's the SF? It looks like... Oh, he's going to wind up. No, he cancels it. That would have caught out Jerex, but it looks like he does not want to... I mean, you kill the wyvern, you go down yourself. Not worth it, if that's going to be the trade you get. So they give up the clockwork, as well as what looks to be the tier 2 top tower, and Liquid's 5-man is proving to be a bit too strong right now. It's just going to keep getting stronger as well. Yeah. You've got to imagine that, you know, see some more key item pickups for them. Uh, SMY on Viper to tank up some more. You get a blink on Rubik. And the blink on the Necro means anyone caught out is going to see a quick blink Reaper come their way. Yeah. They're probably just going to, th if they do threaten the high ground, I'm not sure if they will. If they do, they just probably want to threaten just to make sure that the gyro comes back and they uh, dazzle from bottom lane. Yeah. I mean, right now, Empire playing kind of greedy with the, the split push elsewhere on the map. I guess for general, he goes for an item here, which gives him some big playmaking potential, where it's like a basic stack stats item like an SMY or a BKB type build is not going to necessarily help directly fight into Liquid when they're so far ahead. Yeah, Liquid goes first. They back up, they do a smoke, and now they're going straight to the aggression. Oh god, and they're going to catch from behind. General's not ready for this. Is there detection, though? I don't see any on those three see, heroes. Wyvern any. doesn't have any. He can just shut... Well, he's going to use it aggressively. It looks like Silent's going to get caught. Does he go for the Requiem? He's winding up. I don't think you want to fight those five heroes. And they'll give up the gyro. 70 seconds on the sidelines. General's going to get into the pit. He's going for the TP. Ooh, not scattered out. Just gets out of there in time and... 
they could maybe be able to secure themselves another tier 2 tower, possibly even Roshan, although at this stage it seems they're more focused just on the So he got the towers. Lothar, what, it's been almost almost two minutes ago, right? Yep. Maybe more than two minutes ago, and he's just kind of been... He's getting being put in this mindset where he just wants to gank with it, instead of just farm at all. So okay. that's like three times he's just gone to just cancel the Requiem instead of farming any, or pushing out any lanes. He's had like a kill available and a support or something, but it's always felt like to him that uh, I can't not really worth using if yeah. I'm gonna if he's gonna die for a kill, it's probably not worth it at this stage. Yeah, he can't even really just like solo requiem kill any of the cores. Yeah, that's so where this uh, the Viper is more than ready for it. I think Viper SMY almost complete could be even be a Manta style this game. Oh yeah, Lothar by the way is Shadow Blade for those who are asking. Sorry. <laughs> I remember for the longest time, every, every cast I kept calling it Lothar's. It's only I just, been like I, I, I even I just forget that it's even called yeah. Shadow Blade. So it's only still. been the last like maybe two years where casters have really stopped using Lothar's. But yeah. For the longest time, everyone called it Lothar's, and my bad. I don't mind. I don't mind. You're not a caster. You're, you're you're a pro player. You're allowed to make those mistakes. Kappa. Let's see top lane general going for a kill here on the support, but to no avail. Tell me, man. Did not get the Reaper kill there, yeah. Well, Empire just moving around the map. If they can catch up Viper here, that would be a nice little pickoff for them. They're in hot pursuit. They've got another Rocket Flare for Vision soon. They will maybe catch Vision. No, they sent the Rocket the wrong way. Fata went down river. Find an Invis rune as well. That would have been handy to get a Viper kill. But maybe he went Lothar for like... Anticipating super late game if he goes for like a silver edge to dis to disable the corrosive and the nether toxin and like hard stopper and stuff and sadist. Yeah, I was just trying to look at it. And I was thinking more about it because hmm. I I don't know I didn't really understand the Lothar pickup too much. It definitely has allowed him to be a bit more greedy with some of his farm just by having the escape. Yeah, it is it is doing good as an escape hack there. That's a little tanky gank here for the team. Not too bad and they, if they go for Roche I doubt Empire were going to be able to easily contest Roche anyways. Yeah. Losing a Dazzle is like whatever. Words by Liquid it's just confining Empire in their base at the moment. Oh Kuroki. Oh, he gets fingered. The cold embrace is there though. He survives it. Requiem from the high ground will bring down him. Rubik in the end. Mind control also. One or two more right clicks. He dodges the race. Snowball forward though. Will Snowball see backwards. him meet Ooh. the Mai. Oh no he did snowball backwards. Oh my god he's going to survive. I thought that was going forward to the SF. Woo. That was, that was nice. sick tusk play. I didn't even realize those creeps behind him. Gets out of there. One for one. Healed up exchange. once more. Blinks were revealed. So we saw the lion blink got revealed. He used his finger right away. Rubik blink got revealed. And they'd seen the Tuscar blink when the Dazzle died initially. Yeah. And it will be a Viper uh, Manta. Manta. Same build. He's probably going to go for that AC next. AC heart. You consider a BKB this game against like Clock SF. I mean, it feels like Empire is very much magic damage this game, unlike the the yeah, last maybe, Viper game. Maybe, maybe, maybe. That's a good point. There's they're all pretty much magical except for like the Weave plus the uh, Shadow Fiend. I feel like Silent kind of just started to fall off again. I feel like I haven't seen yeah. him in a while after he died at the Ancients for 80 seconds. That's what a 15 minute SMY we talked about. Yeah. Oh, trying to find some aggression. Hook. Oh, I didn't catch vision of him. I guess that's that's Necro for you. You don't Home see heroes. Engage. Uh oh. And yeah, no real good defensive play. Mind Control does get hit by the uh, Impale here in the grave onto Silent. Perhaps a bit early, but he's going to be more than okay here with the TP out. He will survive. Back to base. Two kills go Empire's way. They are finding kills outside of their base, and they haven't had their high ground threatened just yet. Maybe it's time for Liquid to consider something like Roche. Yeah, I don't think Kuroki expected to get a. Uh, he got Lothar hit and just raised and died. Bottom tower. No, General oh. catching up to his gyrocopter. Possibly time for a gem as well for Liquid to be able to answer to the Shadow Blade. Oh, man, caught out by a Hex as an Impale follow up. A couple more right clicks coming forward. Resolution forces forward into a Cogs here. He's also got a hook shot, but the damage up onto Aloha Dance will see him go down. Grave was on cooldown still. The Weave now there as well. And Liquid seems they may have the numbers here. No fear, still no mana. We'll go down. Elsewhere on the side, Matumba Man chasing. It's going to be the SF. We're going to keep an eye on Winter's Curse. Will oh, I actually got the Requiem off. Jerax survived the dying Requiem, and Empire ends up losing four. Despite starting things off with two pickoffs, they just overcommit there. Yeah, the dust on Jerax, the general not able to run away from the Viper, it just gets slowed down and killed. So Liquid now grouped up once more, and we'll 
Need to probably pressure and poke at this high ground. Matumba's got the Ag Scepter at base when he, when he chooses to buy it. Ooh. That's painful stuff. That's going to be a big problem for Empire. If they get one of their big cores picked off, it could just be the end of their high ground defense. Now they're holding on to the money, I guess realizing he's in a bit of a dangerous position should Empire engage and they want to hold on to the buyback money. And this tier 3 tower going down and going down fast. Hyperstone picked up from Vato. Will be an AC and shot goes in. They want the Tumba Man. Gets glimmered up though. Will help him out. Gets out of the cogs as well. Nicely played from Team Liquid. Resolution now the full stuff out. Gets him still stuck in the shards here. The heals coming onto Vata. So much defensive play. The Necro heal. As well as the Winter Wyvern Cold Embrace, oh, which man, would be too is, much. This looks like it might be the end already. Yep. They're going to lose General here on the front lines. They wait to kill him off a little bit. Worried about that Requiem damage. And what? Well, Reaper killed the back lines. They've brought down the Lion. Now it's going to be no fear. It's a team wipe inside the Empire base. It's going to be at least one lane of Rax. Possibly more. Possibly even a GG. Necrax, he buys a BKB deep in the enemy base. Says, let's just get what items I can then. Give it 5, 10 seconds and everyone on Liquid's going to be full HP. Yeah. Urn charges, Death Pulses. Cold Embraces, Liquid are in fighting shape once more. So much healing, so much like turnaround potential on this lineup. This Viper is just... Fata's owning. It really is. Jarex just got his freshly delivered Glimmer Cave, got put to use right away. Just across the board, doing what they do best, playing like a team. They play so well around the, the Viper pick, and something which we may even see start being more of a targeted ban against, against Liquid. But. For now, Liquid get a 2-1 advantage. They've been trading games so far. We'll see if that's going to continue. Empire not going to get knocked out of the Summit 4 should they lose this best of five. Whoever loses this will be dropping down and have a second chance to qualify for the Summit yeah. 4 from the Europe division. But right now, one of these two teams is going to be advancing. Uh oh we're stuck again. What's going on? We may be restarting the stream after this game during the break. Let's see yeah. if we can figure out what's going on with... Good old split, but uh, so Tuscar two games, Tuscar two wins, Shadowfin two games, Shadowfin two losses, Gyro two games, Gyro two losses. Hmm. Maybe they're gonna start, you know, Less deterring, deterring away from yeah. that. Yeah. And the SF dazzle, I mean, SF just got destroyed mid so and way too hard. I feel like the mid lanes, like it normally the one v one mid is like not so much a deciding factor in a game, but this series it feels like it has been. Yeah. Game two it was general snowballing with Quop. This game it was Viper shutting him down. Game one well, general was the I guess Ember he did well in game one. Yeah, he did. But he had a crap. He had a lane where he like em Ember he never got to fight. He just farmed. Seems like whoever has a lane ward in the mid lane just wins the yeah. lane both times so far. And it was this game where Liquid actually banned the Quop out as well, so... Yeah, helping him out a bit as well. And If you're a Viper and you have your lane solidified like that, it's yeah. it's really hard to come back for the other team. You really want to... If you gank the Viper once or twice, that's the ideal. You crush him in the lane and it's just like, oh god. Alright, well go guys, we're going to take a break. We'll come back, give you guys game four. See if Liquid can secure the series off. We'll have a game five. It's Liquid vs. Empire. Summit 4 Europe. Finals in the winner bracket. We'll be right back. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe we won't be. We'll be looking at us until we're, we're ready to uh, switch our house. <laughs>